I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, one of the big WOW headlines was that Chris Metzen is returning to Blizzard to become the new executive creative director for WOW. A little backstory, if you hadn't heard, he was one of the original Warcraft developers, retired in 2016 to focus on family, founded Warchief Gaming following that, which was like a tabletop gaming development studio. He dipped back in every now and then to provide the voice of Thrall for cinematics. And now he's officially big time back. This is the statement that they published. And from the sounds of this, it seems that he is mainly going to be focused on the narrative of the next expansion. So I would not expect any big changes for Dragonflight. Um, but whatever's coming next is going to have Metzen at the head of it. And we're going to hear more about that at BlizzCon. My main takeaways from this one are that lots of people are really excited about this and it must be difficult to retire <laughs> and stay retired. Doesn't work out for everybody. Other news this week, a big one from 10.2 is that hunters are getting a raid buff for next patch. Hunter's Mark is being reworked in patch 10.2 to provide a raid wide buff. It will be 5% more damage to the target whenever it is above 80% health by everybody. It's going to get a 20 second cooldown in combat. You cannot stack multiples of them. So as long as you have 100 to put up that buff, then the entire raid will do 5% more damage during the first fifth of the health pool and serves the purpose of a raid buff. This now leaves Warlocks as the only remaining class not to have a buff that they bring to raid, either a debuff against the boss or a raid wide buff for the raid. They do bring cookies and summons, so we, we like them, but <laughs> they're the last kid onto the, onto the raid buff bus. I know that in some spheres of the game, hunters were having a tough time previously making a case for their raid spot, so having a raid buff should certainly help. Other things going on, the Turbulent Timeways event is now active, live, and underway. We have six straight weeks of time walking, and you can earn an experience buff for doing them. Do four time walking dungeons roughly back to back on one character, basically just not letting this buff drop to get the Master of the Timeways buff. And if you get that in five different weeks of the Turbulent Timeways event, you will earn the Sandy Shale Wing Mount. The item that was data mined when we were talking about the time waste thing last never materialized. I'm kind of relieved it sounded pretty complicated. So it's just take a character, do four time walking dungeons in a week, and then do that on five of the different weeks and you'll have a mount. It does not have to be the same character week to week. So if you are leveling a bunch of different alts, you can use this different one every week to earn that buff and work towards your achievement while also leveling your alts. But to get one buff, it does have to be one character, but it's only four dungeons. It doesn't take a wild amount of time. If you are time walking as a level 70 character, do not forget to pick up that weekly quest in Veldraken because it now offers a piece of random heroic avarice loot. I actually got a heroic Rashex Molten Heart on Inksy on my Gnome Priest that I'm going to be maining next season. So someone in the universe does love me. <laughs> Other things going on, Blizzard posted a BlizzCon preview when they announced another wave of ticket sales. Uh, it hints at one of the WoW virtual goodies. There was a panel on it that looks like this, showing what appears to be an elemental mount. Looks like something stormy might be coming. And then speaking of mount previews, we have our October Trading Post preview now, so you can now preview all of the goods that will be available in October in the Trading Post. My most excited, big favorite, exciting, excited thing is the new fill the bar reward for October that's coming. It is a mount that looks like this. It's the broom mount. Uh, my understanding is that it'll be a regular mount, so not instant mount like the actual Hallow's End broom, but for all of your witchy needs, um, this mount will be our fill the bar bonus reward. So you will not have to spend tender on it as long as you fill the bar during October, you can get this mount. There are also lots of other things. Um, Demon Hunter, Death Knight, and Druid class items are all going to be on the trading post next month. And you do have one more month to buy that big um, arcane mage looking staff thing. So lots of, lots of goodies coming for October. I will link the whole trading post preview in the description down below. Other cosmetics, there's a new piece of Prime Gaming loot available. You can claim the Zipow Tiger anytime before October the 24th if you have Twitch Prime. I will, as always, link the FAQ down below. This was originally a Taiwanese promotional item, and then it was a recruit a friend reward, and now it's a Twitch Prime redeem. And, you know, third time's the charm. I finally have it now. So, cute pet. Um, if you have Twitch Prime, make sure that you claim this before October the 24th. And then for what I've been up to, this is what my hardcore classic character spread currently looks like. I am in the middle of learning the hard way that it takes a long time to catch up a lobby hunter pet if you try to change your hunter pet and maybe you wanted a white bear and not just any bear and then you tame a level 11 white bear on your level 27 hunter and then you're like, oh, I'll go catch it up and then you realize I've, I've learned that that's a very long, slow project. We are halfway there. <laughs> 
Sam and the bear is coming along beautifully and any level now it's going to be able to hold aggro. Hopefully. I have not had any further hardcore deaths yet. It's still just the one death that one time on my first warlock. And my current hardcore strategy is mostly just to kind of rotate between my three active characters to, to rinse off the rested experience that they gained and then to take a break day every now and then to play retail and let them all build up more rested because at this point it's kind of an experience grind. I mean, the whole thing's an experience grind, but it's going to be a lot nicer with rested. <laughs> And then questions for this week, Catalina wants to know, what has happened to Anduin during Dragonflight, and do you think he will return in this expansion, or will that be the focus possibly of the next one coming? So from what I can scrounge, uh, Anduin is pretty upset about everything that happened to him in the Shadowlands, so he is staying in the Maw for some me time. I imagine he has his hood up, he's got his headphones in, he's listening to his favorite CD, um, just kind of like doing laps trying to walk it off. I doubt he's going to be back during Dragonflight, but I imagine that they will bust him out whenever the story requires it or whenever it's been long enough that he's built up some nostalgia and not somebody they can bring back and have like a whoa moment of, oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> Laughing is good for you wants to know. I've thought about this a lot. I wonder your opinion. Let's say all classes have a spec where they could tank, heal, and DPS. Do you feel like that's too many options or do you think it would be an asset to the game? Personally, and this is just a me thing, I think it's too many options, and I think it would homogenize the classes a little bit too much. It would make them all feel a little bit too much the same if all of them could heal, tank, and DPS. I think that the thing that's keeping people away from healing and tanking is not a lack of spec options. I, and I think that if they want to get more people into healing and tanking, then maybe the focus should be more on making the existing specs and gameplay as rewarding as they can. Um, to as wide an audience as possible, hopefully without sacrificing what makes it rewarding to the people that play it already. I do think you could make an argument for adding one more tank spec and one more healer spec to be the quote-unquote easy spec, where somebody who's maybe less experienced and just kind of wants something that's very user-friendly could come along and fill the role, maybe with like less utility to provide than the more involved specs that can do the job. But, you know, if a group just needs a healer or needs a tank to get on the, on the go and no one's like, you know, somebody just wants an easy one, I could see, an, I could see the appeal of them having sort of like a, like a basic easy version of, um, you know, here, just take this. Somebody can definitely play this go go be free and do your keys or whatever there was probably a better way to organize those words but i like the idea still <laughs> and then andrew wants to know do you think that blizzard will reduce the cost anytime soon to complete a t3 set uh, it was difficult trying to get it from the bmaw and the vendor mat cost makes it feel like blizz only wants the rich to have the tier sets so personally I would not expect that price to come down. I think maybe the logic was to avoid crushing the souls of people that did save up like millions of gold and then buy the sets on the Beamaw by keeping them expensive while still making them available in another way. Um, I do think that if that was the logic, it's logic that they apply really inconsistently because there are plenty of items that I spent large amounts of gold for in the BMAW, um, TCG items primarily, that they've then just kind of given away as Twitch rewards. But that could be a reason why they've kept them so expensive. Um, they could also just be looking for gold sinks and old, previously unobtainable cosmetics are a reasonable-ish place to put them. But yeah, it definitely sucks if you're somebody that likes collecting transmog but doesn't particularly enjoy making gold because I can see that it puts you in a bit of a bind. And then that's been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions for a news video, please pop it in the comments and include the word question to help me find it. I appreciate you guys and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.